right. It's it's four o'clock, so I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, all members appear to be present except Councillor Ciara. And this meeting will be audio and video recorded. And we'll move to public comment. And it appears as, as if there's none. Um, and just before we move into the discussion regarding the roundhouse development lot, I'll just state, I mean, in the minutes say last time I was elected chair. So I'll be chair this term. And, um, and and we'll move into the next matter. So the roundhouse lot, um, Councilor Spector was chair last term, as, as you know. And um, I spoke with the, mess, the mayor yesterday about how we should go forward on this issue. And he said that um, now that the, the UTO report is out, apparently it wasn't out when you held your hearing last, was it November or October? October one. October, thank you. He said that um, he would like another hearing on the matter. And uh, we were discussing whether to post that as a, as, as a meeting of the Roundhouse um, Redevelopment Committee, I believe it's called, which had four additional members on, on top of the membership of this committee. Because uh, it was this whole committee, right? Right. Plus four citizen right. members. And they, and they attended. In the yeah. Mm -hmm. So he. It's his hope to reach back out to them, and, and he assumes that they're still interested in the issue. Um, I was, uh, we discussed whether or not um, I continue to chair, and I, I volunteer on to, to continue chairing unless, unless you'd like to, Paul, because you were the chair last time. Um, I'll come on that. Okay. And, and the other thing, I mean, so that's just, the reason that's on here is because um, I want to discuss that. The mayor thinks the next step should be that uh, that that report should be sent to all the members of the committee. I think you, the, the former members, probably received it, mm -hmm. but the new members, including myself, will get it. And um, he was going to do that today, but I don't think he got to it. And then we can discuss when we can have another hearing on the matter because um, the I believe when the property was surplused, it, it stated that. In the order, it stated that the mayor, in consultation with this committee, would make recommendations. No. Yep. Or, or that this committee would advise the mayor, the mayor would make the ultimate decision. Yep. Um, so that's where I think we are with, with that, as far as um, that discussion goes. Is anything you want to add to that? Yeah, um, just in terms of that ad hoc committee. My understanding at first, and maybe I was wrong, is that although we were all members of that ad hoc committee, that they were actually going to function somewhat independently of us. And I would actually recommend that they choose a chair for that committee and that they meet because, and, and that if there is another public hearing, which I think there should be, um, and I think there should have been another public hearing regardless of whether the report was in or out because I think there were, there were a lot of people who were very interested in this and I think we should just have as many as we need to have and I, I think there's a little more information since the last one. Anyway, but I actually would suggest that we give the ad hoc committee the job of putting that together, and they should have a chair. I think they should run that meeting. I think part of the reason the mayor first came to us and suggested and asked us whether we felt on Edlund that they and had to get our blessing for an ad hoc committee was to kind of say, okay, I'm going to develop more of a cross-section that are elected officials to work on this. And maybe I'm just kind of skewed in my thinking a little bit by the Stormwater Task Force, which I think did a good job of the kind of, uh, the conference committee chose a, another committee to kind of run that. And I think they did a good job, and I think it was received as a more independent voice, another voice. And then we take it too. So that would be my suggestion, is we talk to them, we ask them to choose a chair, we kind of let them run the, those things, come back to us with their suggestions and ideas, and we can question them, and then, then we're the ones ultimately who have the final say about what we then suggest to the mayor. I, I have no objection to that, but, but when you say the ad hoc committee as if it were a separate entity, this, this, this committee is part of the ad hoc committee, yeah. right? Isn't it just this committee plus those four members? So you want those four members to take the lead role? Yeah. Okay, okay, but this committee is part of that. Uh, yeah, or I mean, this makeup is part of my understanding, of and I'm not yeah. quite sure whether it was maybe Mary can help us on this. Whether it was for some kind of technical reason that, or for Kevin, some if you remember this, or uh, 
I actually had thought when he came to us that he was going to have an ad hoc committee, kind of like a pretty independent group that met, talked, and came back to us and kind of said, here's what we've, we've done. That's what I had assumed was going to be the process there. So I was a little surprised, and again, there have only been two of these meetings. We had a meeting here where the ad hoc committee showed up, and then there was a public hearing um, where the ad hoc committee members were all there. Um, and in both of those, actually, Ed Lou actually didn't really, although Owen ran, I think, facilitate that meeting. Essentially, it was Util that ran both of those meetings. So, so anyway, that's my thoughts on it. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Have Util made any additional suggestions after that public hearing? Because there was a lot of talk at that public hearing about what yeah, they, go ahead. Well, my understanding, and you talked to the mayor yesterday, but my understanding is that any suggestions they made were probably very minor compared to what might have been some of the objections of some members mm -hmm. of the public who spoke or objections of the committee. I don't believe the report itself changed. I believe he just finished the report. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. My memory is fuzzy, but I seem to recall, and maybe I missed an Edwin meeting somewhere in the fall, but the uh, uh, the sense that I had was that there were uh, Casper, the other people that were around had been much more involved in UTO than with all of this work yep. than those of us on Edward. I agree. So it, it, uh, just to clarify, that it didn't seem like, uh, yes, nominally, it was a, a, a group that included Edward, but the real work was getting done by the non-Edward mm -hmm. portion of that. In fact, I think supports yeah. your thinking. In fact, I think his selection of people, including someone, say, for example, Mary Casper, who were very involved last time, were not happy with the process. I think the mayor was trying to choose those people who were very active on this specific issue, and, or people who had the kind of knowledge that might be very helpful. So, And that, that would reinforce your recommendation that a group like that be the steering group. Yeah. So if, if they pick a chair, do the members of do the members in this room or members of that ad hoc committee also vote or will just abstain or just we won't be present for that vote when they pick the chair? I think we'll all be present because we're all it, it is still we're right. all still committed to right. the room. So I think I think we'll be so present and voting. We'll defer to them since they're the ones who are carrying the water on this. That makes sense to me. And just for Clarification, Ann and I don't vote. Um, and oh. We are liaisons with other commissions. So that would mean, in fact, if one of us doesn't show up for that meeting, would they not have a quorum? Would they need five to have a quorum if they met separately? Because we have four voting members, so there are eight voting members. Mm -hmm. that, well, the ad hoc committee would need four members, right? I Just mean, four? Yeah, because be, there would be seven voting members at that point, so there would be, there'd be eight voting, there are four councilors oh, on right. this, just three and there are four on there, that makes eight You're voting right. members, five. or five, four and a half, but none of us <laughs> councilors. <laughs> yeah, so. right. That's right, they would need five members. So you need so, at least one as a person so at all. I have a, I have a question, and I'm not sure we can do this, but, you know, when we did the stormwater task force, I think Mary may have the most information on this, we did the stormwater task force, they were able to meet on their own. None of us. We didn't have to show up for those. I mean, we weren't even on that committee. So I was, do we need to even be members of the ad hoc committee? Can this be a, a can we call it something else well, and not have it? I think the mayor appointed it as an ad hoc committee. I don't think we can really change that structure. Okay. Uh, and, and I think that we can have, if, if they meet on their own, they can't pass anything. Because they need five. They, they would be, well, in fact, they shouldn't be talking about anything then, too, right? No, because they're, no, they're not. The four of them can talk because they're not. Because they're not a flat to vote. Oh, well, I rest my case. <laughs> Are they an ad hoc? I'm lost. <laughs> they're ad hoc of us of this committee. Yes. Okay. But you have the mayor. I, 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 my understanding. Tell me I'm wrong. You were here. I was. I thought the ad hoc committee was the four. The four. Well, the six members of, of, of this committee, including the four voting and non-voting members, plus the four members. And that comprised the entire ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It wasn't an ad hoc committee, committee as an outgrowth of this committee, but that all together comprised one ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe that's the case. Yeah.
you can add a committee to your resume. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you guys can too, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. our state oh, yeah. 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 So that's just going to be a matter of, um, the mayor's going to reach out to the, the four other members and try to schedule a hearing. And I guess, I mean, I guess at that hearing, they, they can, we all can go in a new chair at that point, okay. specifically for for that ad hoc committee. I mean, I don't think there's any need to, to uh, have a separate meeting. Mm -hmm. And I, I, don't, I don't know if there's any need to have any other meetings with the ad hoc committee that's not a hearing to the public. Do you think there's a need for that? I don't. But somebody else does. Okay, so I'll work on scheduling that with the mayor and make sure the mayor emails electronic copies of the report to everybody. Okay. 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 All right. So, resolution to support Byron sidewalks. Um, here's another one. Which I, I believe, did, did this committee take this up last session? Yes. We did. And we voted to support it. No, it's still in it. It's still in this committee. Is this the exact same wording that came up before the city council? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, is, there, where, does anyone have any thoughts on this? Um, I remember the, the language that people were uncomfortable with had to do with the survival language. Mm -hmm. um, so we can discuss that if anyone has, has anything they'd like to opine on with respect to that section or any other. And this committee can amend it if it wants or send it forward. Um, I spoke with Bill Dwight and he wanted this to go to Social Services, Veterans Affairs, and Culture and Recreation, that committee, um, which is now one committee. And he, it was his hope that they could take the lead role on this. Um, we have that option. We also have the newly created hearings, uh, hearings, investigations, and practices committee. We could go to that as well. But it was it was um, the council president's preference that that and I'm pulling up his text to me on it um, that he wanted to be revived here at the committee, which which I mean we're kind of in violation of our rules because it. So this has been in committee too long. It's not supposed to be in committee more than 60 days, but that happened. So um, we really should try to move it forward today. If we can send it back to the full council for further um, referral out, um, but I think I think it's the opinion of some, including Bill Dwight, and I think others, Council Maureen Carney is one of the other sponsors, and Council Labarge. I, I think it's their opinion that this needs more public discussion. So um, we can discuss this here, but we should. We may want to send it forward to the full council for further referral to the other committees. Is this a public? Is this had a public meeting? This the council voted on this. Uh, and and oh, did it vote to? Did, did it just refer it out? Did, did, did mm -hmm. It was just referred out. Mm -hmm. So was it, was it referred elsewhere besides here? I mean, has anyone else seen it? Don't have my ordinance. Okay, no, that's okay. No, I'm right in front of you. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was. Is this more directly a consequence of the benches thing, yes. or of the whole question of Main Street and its width and changing, or is it some combination of all of these things? Well, yes. it, it's it was directly after the bench matter, and it's kind of about the larger issue. I mean, it does encompass the larger issue, yeah. but this, this came, Councilor Carter drafted this right in the midst of the bench matter, yeah. which was about May of last year, right in the middle of the budget. Councilor Bell? Oh, we go. go ahead. Um, just a procedural question. Don't, didn't we change the rules to 90 days? No, we not, did change it to 90 days. I'm not arguing to keep it. Yeah, curious. no, we, it's 90 now. When it was referred here, it was 60. Okay. That was the old rule. It is 90 now. Okay, just thanks. Um, I was not going to vote for this in council only for one word, but let me just say, when I read the article because Maureen sent it around. Um, I think one thing in pulling out something like, yeah, this is the key, these are the key um, 
ideas in that article. It's a very good article. But I think without the whole article, there's, there's the use of the word disruptive twice. And actually, it, it's a little maybe picky on my part. But the second disruptive is actually what was the debate in the council meeting, and I brought that up, which is under, I think it's under now, the very last paragraph, where it says both enjoyable and disruptive activities. Well, we've already talked about disruptive activities, and I think it, it's a provocative statement. I think it's some of my concern during the time of the benches, and it wasn't just around the benches, it's also the whole panhandling ordinance mm -hmm. and that issue of urgency. Mm -hmm. And Councilor, you have, you, know, you have a father who has a business here. I, there's a part of this that it felt a little too in your face to the, to the folks who own businesses here, who I think, when I spoke to a lot of them, these are good folks. They felt like they were being accused of all kinds of things. And it felt a little unnecessarily provocative. And I would have been happy just taking out the second disruptive. It's already said once. And it's said pretty clearly. And I wouldn't mind another kind of word like disruptive that explains what that's about. But there was something about that, and I had a few calls on that, that that's what people focus on. And I think the article in the newspaper, when people say, oh my god, you're doing this thing, what you're basically saying is we can have disruptive behavior on the street. And I find myself saying, no, well, you actually can't have illegal behavior. I mean, it, it started being a very defensive mode around that word. And I said that in council meeting, I think that most counselors disagreed with me. Um, but I still would object to this and would like to change what it's that trying, language. What it's trying to do is encourage people to read the article? No. I'm saying that... No, no, no. What this is trying to do is... No, it's not trying to get people to read the article. This is trying to make a statement using the highlights of that article to say this is what makes vibrant sidewalks. Here are the things. And we got these ideas from this article. It encourages a strategic preview of the article. Yeah, it does, but I don't believe that the that instituting this as a resolution was, sure, if everybody would read it, that would be great, but I don't think that was the sponsors. Okay. They'd have to be here to say that. I think okay. they, believe, right. okay. they believe it's said right here. Uh, I'm, I, I'd be happy to put it here. I mean, if you want to make a motion. I would like to, you know, I'm not quite I mean, sure we, can, we can just have one place. We could, I mean, we could change that language, just be more general and broad. Can't you say a variety of uses? That's what I was thinking. So yeah. I mean, like to accommodate a, 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 I would be happy to find that. To accommodate a variety of, uh, Brilliant. of activities. Yeah. A variety of activities. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, you mentioned that a lot of the uh, controversy seemed to stem from the language and the survival yeah, section. Sure. I think that was. I think. I think it was. It was. It was uh, the disruptive. We had a robust discussion about the disruptive language. But I think. I think some people took. Uh, were particularly concerned, particularly business owners, about um, the survival language. And I'm thinking. I mean, if there's a way that maybe, if, if others agree, that we can change this language so it. It. Um, it suggests that you know. It, it, it suggests the same thing that there are certain. Activities that people carry out um, that are that are considered daily activities that some people have to do outdoors. I mean, that's something we can consider at this committee too, if you want to. Councilor Bell. Um, I don't know. I read about a court case. I think actually it was in Utah at the beginning of the year in January, and it was about panhandling. I'm sure it's not unique. I I I, I can fish it out and send it to the committee for your information. But it was interesting because. Um, if they didn't use the word disru disruptive, they used similar words. But it was entirely about freedom of speech, you know. And I think that is, is probably the largest part of this, you know. Because um, it's, it's opinions that make someone uncomfortable. It shouldn't, it, it, I don't think it should be, you know, anything physical or anything that makes people feel afraid. It's, it's about the kind of discomfort that has to do with freedom of expression. And I, I guess that's, I would just observe that. Um, that's a standard I've seen in, in cases on panhandling, and maybe that's what this intends to express. And if so, maybe it could be expressed better. Are there, have there been issues with urination on the street? Because when you read this, you, you, you look at what's not there, and you assume that's what's not there, and I wonder if there's any issues that you're aware of. I don't know where I, 
Okay. Really. I haven't heard anything yeah, about that. That's what I that for a long time. I don't really remember that being a, a, okay. a frequent right. problem. But, but I, I think it's reasonable. Really find some no, I just want that on the record. <laughs> if you're going to talk about, you know, the things you do normally in indoors, right, yeah. you're not a public. That's right. true. I didn't yeah, I mean, come on that. <laughs> um, it's it's uh, it, it seems like it could be written in a different way, and I'm, I'm, by specifying that this allows sleeping on public sidewalks, that seems unwise to me. Um, uh, by having the word sleeping right there. To, to say thematically, yeah, there's some stuff people don't have at home, don't have any place else to do, uh, so we've got to be kind of like nice, respectful, and tolerant. Sure, okay. Uh -huh. But then to say they get to sleep on the sidewalk, because it, it, it's that sort of line that is a fuzzy line, but once crossed, well, you know, you get down to the places in where there's steps in front of some of the storefronts and people hang out, and then if they're lying down, and I've seen them lying down, and it, you know, people aren't going to be so inclined to uh, feel comfortable. Uh, it, it's along the lines of, in a, in a workplace, uh, there's uh, a standard of the, the, the reasonable uh, woman test, which is what constitutes harassment, what a, what a, a normal reasonable woman experience something as intimidating and uncomfortable. Um, and that doesn't have to be anything other than physical postures and emotions and looks and attitudes if, if it could be construed by uh, uh, the court as, yeah, a reasonable woman would feel uncomfortable. Well, I've, I've heard women describe that they don't feel comfortable going to ATMs when there's people around, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I, I think we have to be cautious in how we allow language and this kind of thing to stay on one side of the line. But, uh, um. Maybe a suggestion would be, because it, it, it seemed like um, to me that there is consensus that we should change the, in the last paragraph, we should change it. Maybe we should, uh, maybe, maybe we can amend I make, right I make a motion to make that amendment. Yeah. So the new language, if I have it right, uh, the new language. <coughs> Should, would be that the Northampton City Council envision sidewalks as spaces that can accommodate a variety of activities, comma, encourages a strategic yes. review, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, do you move to that effect? I move that. Yep. Is there a second? Um, should be, okay, second. I'll second. No, second. Okay. Uh, further discussion? Um, just, just for the sake of discussion, I mean, is there any is there any virtue to referring this if we're going to refer it anyway? Is there any virtue referring it unamended to a committee where there can be a full public hearing on it and these things can be um, addressed by uh, more of a you know, fuller way rather than us I, wordsmithing it here? That's a question. I wouldn't object to that except for the fact that I think that language and perhaps in the survival language is your point. I would ask what the underlying intent of the sponsor's work was, and, and I trust that it's a very positive one, but I'm concerned that it's unduly provocative, even to move into the public hearing. But if in the public session people are saying, we want that language back in, and we hear that, then it can go back in, and we can debate on the council floor. But I think it raised, I don't think this was the intent of the sponsors to kind of draw a line. It feels a little like drawing a certain line and making us hard stamp, saying, you know what, we're behind this, we're behind this, we're, people can sleep on the street, they'll be disruptive. And I, I saw how the, the, many of the, of the owners of, of businesses down here took it as kind of saying, we support the paneling and kind of like stop, you know, kind of almost accusing them. And I'd like to tone this down so there could be a public hearing where the dialogue, because I, I actually think there's a lot more dialogue and places of common interest on both sides. Uh, also, we, uh, I got an outstanding amount of feedback on this whole issue, including this, this, uh, you know, this resolution. And so I think that uh, if we, if we change it here, that's that we've had. I think we've had enough community input to make those changes, but we'll still have more. Yep. So you know, if if. If people want different language, the process doesn't end here. But I don't, I don't, for me, I don't, I don't think it's a reason to not amend it here. Um, Is it a sequential process? Or? 
comes out of this committee goes to the next step in whatever form it is at the end of this step in the process. It'll come, if it, if it amends here, it comes back to the full council as amended. Right? Uh, is that right, Mary? I believe it would go from here to ordinance. Oh, that's good. Yeah, right. Which, which is a, a, we actually have one counselor here from ordinance. We have a sponsor of this amendment on ordinance besides the chair of ordinance. So they, they can have a robust, you guys can have a robust debate there as well. Um, and put the language back in. Uh, my, my guess is that Councillor Carney, who was uh, probably, she and I were debating this most strongly on the council floor, that Councillor Carney will have a, some strong reasons for putting you back in, and you might recommend to go back in and decide to do that, and send it to the full council with the original language. So instead of, actually, instead of actually changing it, you can say we recommend it with these following edits or amendments. Right. And then we'll from there. When you have that option. Uh, I, I would actually like to add, I would actually prefer to um, amend it. And I think I trust that Councillor Carney, who has strong views on this, will see that, maybe even highlight it for her. And I don't want her to miss that, and I, my guess is I'd rather make it the stronger step than to actually amend it. So it what do you think of simply taking the two words that are in the parentheses out? I was going to suggest putting a period. Yeah, if, I'm, I'm sorry, just if we could just so stay on the motion. Oh, we got one more yeah. motion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, so that's 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 so the motion, motion passes. And if we could go back now to the survival paragraph this, uh, to discuss whether or not this committee would like to amend that or make some recommendations that it doesn't actually take a vote on. So there's a recommendation. Do you have a I, I was going to suggest the period after life and delete uh, what's in parents and the rest of that sentence. So could you read oh, that? It would then read. It would then read uh, survival for some people the sidewalk is home and the only place where they can carry out the ordinary activities of daily life too. And that, that would be the whole thing, leave yeah. everything else out. And then, well, the next sentence, sidewalks are sidewalks sidewalks. often controversially mm -hmm. the yeah. place for, but in terms of that first sentence, uh -huh. it would end yeah. after life. Uh, I agree. I agree. Because it, just, as, uh, just to echo Councilor Specter said, there really were some business owners who took this as a personal front, yeah. as a we side with, you know, we, we yeah. think we think you're wrong, and we don't. We, we think that you're, you know, whatever. Yeah. But um, some people were truly offended by it, and um, and I think without it, it's still an effective resolution. Right? Yeah. I don't yeah. feel that it guts yes. it. I just feel that it removes the part that some people took tremendous offense to. It is still in support of vibrant sidewalk for democratic activities. Activities occur. Some of which are comfortable, some of which are uncomfortable. It's just that I agree with removing that set that those words. So Thank you. I'll, I'll move that as an as a. Uh, Amendment to this. If there's a second, um, I second that. Is there further discussion on that? Do you have the language? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So that motion passes as well. So well, now you're down to where it's resolved and what your activities will be. Do you think that those are consistent with what the rest of it now says? I mean, it's resolving for action or of some kind. <clears throat> I do. I think okay. we just changed that to the your language yeah. of the various yeah. things. Okay. And, yeah. So I'm ready to move the question on the. Uh, is there a motion to send it forward with uh, to the ordinance committee with a positive recommendation as amended? So moved. Second. Further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, you can go on to the March 10th ordinance. So I post it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Excellent. So I'll discuss the March 10th ordinance meeting. Um, 
So we'll move to item number seven. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of February 4th? So moved. Second. <clears throat> Second. Is there any discussion on the approval of minutes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any new business? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.